What's up everyone? It's Stephanie Liu and welcome to another episode of Showrunner's Secrets from the Set. We are back! We are back and it's gonna be so fun because every new episode that we put out there, man, it is absolutely amazing and it's so much fun. So listen, 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 listen. If you're here, let me know where you're tuning in from. I am here in beautiful sunny San Diego. And here's what you gotta know. Tech and talent can make or break your remote live video production. So let's talk about how you can prep your client and their guests so that way you are showing their very, very best. Let's go ahead and get started, friends. Let's go ahead and roll the show. Hey, what's up Ecamm fam? I'm Stephanie Liu and welcome to Showrunner Secrets from the Set where we share tips on how you can launch a successful remote live video production. Today we're gonna share ideas on how you can set up your clients for success because once you make them look good, they're always gonna wanna work with who? With you, that's right. All right, so for those of you that don't know already, we have been running Showrunner Secrets from the set for quite some time. And so we have had episode after episode just running all the amazing things. In fact, the last one that we had, we were talking about storyboards and structuring, right? Today, we're gonna be talking about planning and production. And by planning and production, it's mostly about how to make sure that your client, (laughs) that your client is prepared because whether or not you have all the graphics, all the gear, and all the things if your client or your client's guests show up without any headphones. <laughs> right? Then we want to make sure that we eliminate all of that mess. And so having said that, that's what we're going to cover today. I would love to hear what you're doing. I'll share with you what we're doing for our clients. But more importantly, the very, 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 very last episode is going to air on April 7th. I know it's been an amazing, wonderful journey spending this time together with you. The very last episode, we're going to focus on sealing the deal, pricing out your services, all the questions that you've been asking (laughs) for quite some time. Yeah. Uh, let's go over it. Let's run through it, right? There it is. Yay. Okay. We've been having episode after episode, just building upon everything that we've been sharing with you. And so if you want to relive that experience or just get the cliff notes, because Hey, we're all busy, right? This is an opportunity for you to go ahead and scroll through, get the key takeaways, figure out what resources and tools we actually mentioned on the show. So in the very first episode, we talked about the evolution of live streaming, how it's a game changer. I give you tons of stats, tons of stats, infos, things that are trending, not only in the U us, but worldwide, right? So that way you could sell your services easily and effortlessly. That's what we all want. Yes or yes. Heck yes. So you can watch the replay over there, get gear guides, all the things and have fun with it. Good, 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 good. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about how to get your clients prepared for their actual event, because sometimes clients don't know what it is that they don't know, or they have like these limiting beliefs that if I wear headphones, it's going to look weird. And it's like, you know, it's actually weird is seeing a client on camera and then hearing four different voices. That's what's weird. Okay. We're talking about setting up your clients for success. And one of the things that I generally like to do, I'm going to keep it very simple for you today is I like to give them an interview checklist. Let's go ahead and take a look at the template that I've gone ahead and prepared. This is something that we use for a pre-show checklist. This is going to be an opportunity for you to repurpose, remix any which way that you like. Take what works for you and then go from there. Generally, when I get started with clients or even if I'm going to have someone on the show, we have an interview checklist and I try to personalize it like, hey, are you ready for your spotlight? Yeah, we're going to make you look absolutely amazing. Okay, good. So in the pre-show checklist, I let them know what software I'm going to use, which is, hello, of course it's gonna be Ecamm Live. And yes, I use the interviewing feature because it's so easy and it's so seamless. For those of you that want to get extra fancy with your interview guest URL, you could use a service such as Rebrandly so that it's just, it's branded. It could be showrunner.live slash guest right? Join if that's what you want it to be. But that's a really great way for you to practice with your guest. 
Now, when we are setting up for our clients, things that we generally talk about is, yes, make sure you have a wired connection. If at all possible, make sure that you are plugged into your computer via an ethernet cable. This can make a big, big difference in the performance with the video and the audio syncing all together. Ooh, let's make this production smooth like butter, right? Do that. And if the client says to you, oh, well, you know, I would hang out on Zoom and on Zoom it works. It's like, baby, this ain't Zoom. <laughs> this ain't Zoom, okay? Let's make sure that you show up with your best face forward because <laughs> I don't want you to freeze on frame. <laughs> okay, cool. So give them a wired connection. If you even want to send them an ethernet cable, by all means, please do. Then you want to check devices. I've got iPads iPhones, iMacs, all the things. Make sure that they're disconnected from the Wi-Fi. These are things that even when you're going in your tech rehearsal, right? They're like, oh yeah, 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 I know. And then on the day of, right? On the day of what happens? Life happens. And so this is an important opportunity for you remind them, make it a part of their conscious awareness. Like, hey, hey, remember to go ahead and do this, okay? Close down apps. Dropbox, Google Drive, anything that could be running in the background. Doc is here in the audience and I know that he's probably like, you know what? You can have this extension and that software and that tool and it'll help you do this, this and that. Doc, go ahead, lay it on them. Let them know what they need to know, okay? Clients, sometimes they don't remember. I always like, I don't know about you guys, but I always have those moments where I'm like, make sure you close your email. And then you hear the, you got mail. <laughs> Were you even paying attention? So then upload speed. You guys are pros, you know this. Speedtest.net, type in, you know, internet upload speed. Cause clients, more often than not, they know their download speeds, but not their upload speeds. One of my girlfriends was telling me about how she was visiting her family up north. They're like 25 minutes away from Silicon Valley. And she was wondering why just a two minute video, it was taking her three hours to upload. And y'all, the upload speed was like 0 0.05, some ungodly thing. And I don't know about you, but sometimes, sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm an internet snob. <laughs> Hate to say it, but it's true. So we've talked about that, make sure, making sure that they have a stable connection. I don't know about you, but whenever I'm working with clients, especially for a remote live video production, I always ask them, show me your run of show. If you don't know what a run of show is, we talked about that, gosh, like in two episodes back. But in your run of show, I want to know who your guest is. And I wanna make sure that we actually have a tech rehearsal. And the same thing that we're doing right now, we're gonna do that with them as well. I don't care if they've showed up in Zoom doing whatever, whatever it is. If you have a virtual event and you're expecting 8,000 people to show up live, you want to make sure that you've done your due diligence. Am I right or am I right? Hell yeah, I'm right. You know I'm always right. All right, so make sure that they have a stable internet connection. Then let's talk about sound and video. Use earphones, please use earphones, headphones. This reduces echo and increases the quality. If you need to put in more things in here to scare the crap out of them, to just be like, if you don't want to embarrass yourself in front of your shareholders, in front of your investors, get earphones. This is your opportunity to give them suggestions on what it is that you already do. I know a bunch of you in the Ecamm community are Amazon affiliates. Drop a link to your Amazon affiliate, or if you're really, really smart, give them a link to your kit.co and it says this, this is how you're gonna show up to be your best. Here's the mic, here's the headphones, right? Like here's all the things. That's what you gotta do. I know for me, some people were asking this in the last episode, episode Stephanie, what are you wearing? I don't use the, the, the me that Luria and Doc and the other people use. Maybe I just have really tiny, <laughs> tiny ears because <laughs> I'm five foot four, but they never really fit my ears. So I actually have these vidons that just go around my um my head. And then because my hair is black, they're, they're pretty hidden every now and then. You don't really see it. So do what you got to do there. If you want to have branded ones, dude, that's so smart. That's so sick. And if they have to get the plug-in headphones, I remember I learned this from Luria. It was like a an extension for the ethernet cable. I'm trying to see if I have it next to me. Yeah. Yeah, it's this one. And so it would plug into my old headphones that would just go over my ear and then I would just run it in the back. The ones that fit in the ear, I'm just saying from my own personal experience, they've never really worked for me. Doc, wait, Doc was like, um, excuse me, I, pro I have a fancier version. No, I was watching you. It was like the $25 ones. And I was like, okay, I want that. Doc will let you know other headphones that you can use. He's the one in the community that like, if you wanna like get your audio in check, perfection, 
chef's kiss. He'll help you out with that for your clients and your clients interview. We guess these can work too. Which actually brings me to my next point, microphones, right? External mics. In speaking with clients, I, oh man, I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely hate the the AirPods that hang from the ear. They're like, oh, you know, they're headphones and a mic. It sounds so crappy. <laughs> Right? If you could send your client microphones, that would be ideal. In fact, I don't think I ever told you this, but one of my good friends, Gary Ware, he was speaking at this, he was speaking at this event and it had to go virtual, which a lot of the events are happening, right? And this company, they did a fantastic job. They said, hey, presenters, we are going to send you, we're going to send you gear. Oh, can you imagine that? <laughs> Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? So they sent them microphones, Logitech Brio 4Ks, like that was legit. I was like, what? That's amazing. And they sent them the gear in advance. So that way when they actually had their tech rehearsals, right? When they had their tech rehearsals, they knew that they were all working with the same gear, which made the onboard onboarding process so much easier. And I absolutely love that. All right, so we talked about sound and video. This is absolutely important in talking to your clients, right? These are like the bare bones own basics. Next, webcam. Talk to them, please, about lighting. There are clients where I am just very, very strict. And I'm like, I need to see where there's, where this person is going to sit. I need to know. I need to know that they're not just walking off the plane and they're just going to try to connect to Wi-Fi at that point. So one of my good friends, uh, Joe Floyd, he talks about like when he talks to his guests to make sure like how much headroom they have, right? So like put your hand on your head. How much headroom do you have? I move around a lot because I get excited when I talk to you. It's not very often I, that I get to geek out with people, but definitely give them advice. Now my clients, they will say, if we're doing re even just remote video recording, take your laptop and move it around the room. Let's find a spot. It doesn't matter if it's even going to be in the laundry room, because I'll be honest with you, one of my good friends, I Addison Zhang, that's how she first started her live stream show. She just found a spot in the laundry room, stacked books there, and at least had no clutter in the background. All right, so let's go back to this. So we've talked about the gear, audio, sound, lighting, all the things, phones, alarms, make sure you silence them, right? Or even if, you know what, here's the thing. Even if there's going to be a sound, I would rather just have a presenter utilize that into their presentation and just be like, oh, you just heard that, that doorbell? Yep, even UPS agrees, just roll with it. Rather than having the presenter be all like, oh, I'm sorry, I should have done this. It's like, dude, dude, stick to what you're supposed to say. Provide the value going on. It's it's improv, live streaming is improv. You keep going, okay? You keep going. So phones, alarms, silence them. If they forget, just say, hey, you know what? Utilize that in your presentation, but do not distract from what you're actually presenting. Keep running with it. Interruptions, if you can, if at all possible, interruptions, try to minimize it. Try to minimize it any which way that you can. I once had a presenter who was like, oh yeah, I got that figured out. And she did something really, really creative. So she had like this little light and when you tap on it, it would turn red. And so she would put it outside the office and she's like, boom, it's red. Do not enter. Do not pass go. Do not, <laughs> do not pass go. And so people would know not to enter because she was on air. That's an easy possibility. There's probably those of you that are already running over to Amazon right now and you're just like, oh, I need to get like the Amazon. Or is it like the Philips smart bulbs where you could connect it to the stream deck? I know you guys have this figured out. Again, please go over to the Ecamm live community because they are so freaking freaking clever about what it is that you can do. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. So interruptions. Those are a few tips on how you could manage interruptions. Let me tell you a quick story. There was this one time where I was giving a presentation at the Midwest Digital Marketing Conference. And I kid you not, my daughter kicked open the door and was like, my tablet, right? Ran out of time. Boop, 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 boop. On Stream Deck, I had like a screen pop up that said, we will be right back because mama got to do what mama got to do. That's something else that you could do for interruptions. For those of you who haven't done that before, it's nice to have just a screen, like we'll be right back. You could say experiencing technical difficulties. Someone forgot to feed the hamster, right? We're leaving cookies out for the Amazon delivery fam. Whatever it is that you gotta do, make it fun. Make it fun for your event. All right, so we've talked about interruptions, creating a graphic that you can use, repurpose out, or it could just be like, quick shout out to our sponsor. <laughs> Roll the video clip. 
like, roll it now, save the show. <laughs> All right, muting. Yes, knowing how to mute your mic. Also making sure that there's an echo. Here's something that I didn't even mention. When I'm doing remote video recording, even for clients, we talk about attire. So for men, like don't wear stripes, right? Cause then it comes across like really weird on camera, <laughs> like disappearing. Don't wear a green screen if you're gonna be using a green screen. Pretty self-explanatory at that point. Don't use a green, don't wear green which was actually really funny because when I was interviewing Molly Mahoney on my show, I was like, hey, I use a green screen, don't wear green. And she, what did she do? She wore green. <laughs> Our heads don't process negatives. Wear any other color but green. Clutter, clear the background for the ladies. Bracelets, rings, earrings. One thing that I usually tell my presenters too is that if they're the type of person that talks with their hands, I talk with my hands like, a lot, okay? I try to push the mic away from me so when I know when I'm making a point that I don't bang on it. Placement of the mic is gonna be very important. If they're wearing, so let's say they are wearing those headphones with the built-in mic, for the ladies or even the fellas that have like long hair, if it rubs up, right? If it rubs up against the microphone, I always tell them, take it, move it to the other side just so it works out perfectly. Okay, so yeah, we talked about like rings, banging of the mics bracelets, the hair, right? That's always going to be very helpful. I also ask them, you know, do you, maybe you might have like an unconscious behavior. Maybe you're just not aware of it, but are you the type of person where when you're speaking, like you hit the table just to make a point? That's awesome, but that's totally going to suck for the viewers. Maybe you could do something else like, you know, just doing this or snapping your fingers, that totally works too. I also ask them if they have an unconscious behavior where they might shake their knee because if they shake their knee, then I want them to like move back a little bit and make sure it doesn't knock the table. These are things that I've heard before. Yeah, don't bang the table. I also ask them your drink, your water, make sure it's like a little bit further away. One of my good friends, Jeff C was telling me about a time when he was um, interviewing Guy Kawasaki. Jeff had spilled coffee all over his lap and he did the entire interview with like wet pants. I don't know if I was supposed to tell you that, but I did, so there you go. Joe had mentioned earlier that he takes like a screenshot. I think if we were to take that another level, I have done tech rehearsals where I've actually recorded it. I've actually recorded it because the client was like, does it look like I'm, does, does it look like I'm reading on the screen and I was like yes it looks like you're reading on the screen no it doesn't I'm looking right it was the funniest thing. she's like no it doesn't because when I look at it it looks like I'm looking at the camera but yeah I was like dude let me just make a gif of you right now of you falling asleep on camera all right let's go back to the list because this list is what's going to be very helpful for you decreasing the clutter pay attention to the background and crop the clutter as much as possible it sounds simple but some people forget oh my goodness please let them know that you have the option to switch screens, right? In, in ECAB. But this this one time I had a, a guest, man, this one time I had a guest in the tech rehearsal and it was like, it was a tight shot. That was a tight shot. Like, okay, and now we're gonna switch screens. And I was like, boof. And I was like, hey, that bathrobe is still hanging in the background, right? You might wanna go clear that up a little bit. That's gonna be very helpful. Or if you're working on an event and one of the presenters is an author, good opportunity to build that rapport and be like, hey, do you have a book? Do you want to put it in the background? Which actually, P.S. by the way, that's, that's a good segue. I want to give a shout out to SwitchPod who definitely hooked it up for showrunner seekers from the set because Katie and I were like, what should we add to the set? And they're like, oh, we should do SwitchPod because SwitchPod is absolutely amazing. Awesome. Crop the clutter. I feel like we're going to have new hashtags. Crop the clutter. I don't want to. Oh yeah. I don't want to like, see that was unconscious. I was like, I don't want to clap too hard. If you have clappers as presenters, let them know. Let them know. Okay, are you the type of person when you're making a point and you're clapping? Because I'll be very honest with you, when you do that, all the audience is going to hear is just the clapping sounds. It's going to be like, and you should know that. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Cool. Doc Rock says that he claps, but you you know, you, you have those amazing sound levels and you know what it is that you're going to do and all the things. I'm talking about your normal everyday people, especially presenters that are now presenting online. More often than not, they know how to work the stage in person. We're helping them understand and navigate the virtual stage at this point. Other things that I do, and I think it was... <laughs> it was Kevin who was saying, we pull in guests via Skype into Ecamm using a second Mac. I then send a feedback to them using a virtual camera with a countdown overlay in Ecamm. Okay, got it. What I thought you were saying, what I thought you were saying was that you're going to give them a preview of how each of the scenes are going to look like. 
So whether they're presenting, you know, something like this, like, hey, this is how much space you have. Okay, let's talk about the, the hand gestures. She's like, and you should know this, but then like their hands fell off the screen. This is what you're working with, this box. That's where you go. You're gonna be chest up. That's what you're gonna do. You're gonna give them options. And if they want to point at what's happening in their presentations, like, hey, you should go ahead and get your, your storyboard template. It's for free, here, help them out. Just remind them like where to point. That's always very helpful. So we've talked about this general checklist, things that I generally tell clients or when I give them this checklist, Kevin, you probably do this as well, is that I'll brand this Google Doc send it over to the client. The client can repurpose it any which way that works best for them. You could have even in your meeting invite, okay, let's go through the list just to make sure. I've even had people where they're just like, hey, Stephanie, I know that you live stream and this is just a part of my job. Don't hate me for it, but let's just go down the list. I actually, as a live streamer, I appreciate that because I find that there's always opportunity for us to learn from other people. And there are things that I will pluck from like, oh, absolutely love that. Like Joe's whole thing about taking a screenshot, if it worked, right? if it was working, then keep doing that. Don't try to move somewhere else. I'm curious for other event producers, when you're talking to male talent, male presenters, do you even talk to them about makeup, like beyond blotting paper? Do you talk about like, hey dude, you look like you, ha you haven't had sleep in a while. Do you talk to them about like under eye concealer and all the things? This goes back to Demetrius's question about, do you talk to them about makeup and styling, right? So we talked a little bit about accessories and patterns, things of that sort, but we didn't talk about makeup. I would love Doc, Kevin, if you guys could weigh in on that. Joe, if you're still here, go ahead and do that. Good, good, good. Oh, Anthony has a good one. You guys, the fellas are, are throwing it down today. Some guys need to shave in the afternoon. I don't have that problem, but some do. I love that Doc, Kevin, Anthony, you guys are here because female event producer, I don't really think about like the, you know, the shaving stuff on the face. So thank you. I learned something new. Thank you. Hey, here's an opportunity. If someone wants to launch another show, makeup for male presenters, look at that. Ecamm's like, well, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's create content for that. Yvie Hyman, who is a part of the Ecamm Live community, says that she's actually helped out with makeup before. Wow. I'm like, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm like all over in the comments like, oh, tell me more. Tell me more. That's interesting. So you, maybe this would be a really good opportunity. Caleb, I'm like directly talking to you, speaking to your soul right now. Let's take all these suggestions. Let's add it into uh, the checklist, right? On how to prep a guest. I love the comments about hair, makeup, and styling because I don't even have that on here. Such wonderful, great additions. Kevin, shave, shine, teeth, collar check, and lumify. I feel like I'm just imagining in my head right now, like Doc, Kevin, and Joe, you guys like all getting fresh and like we about to go out tonight. Bro, you got to fix your collar. That's cool. I love that. I love that. Back to the show. Camera ready tips. Uh, look directly at the camera, right? I know it's tempting to look at your screen. We go through this all the time with clients. I know it's tempting to look at your screen, but you know, sometimes it looks like you're falling asleep. And so to jo Joe's point about taking a screenshot or even just uh, taking the video, I'm, you know what? I'm gonna even, gonna, I'm gonna throw this in there too. Cause all the fellas were talking about like the shaving and all that other stuff. I once had a client where she was wearing the, uh, the magnetic lashes. You know what I'm talking about? Magnetic. <laughs> The guys are like, we have no idea what you're talking about. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about, the magnetic lashes. When I was doing that video recording, because she was reading from a script, it looked like, do you know, do you remember those baby dolls where like the eyes go open and close? Well, one was like open and one was down. And I was, I kept trying to like be nice and explain. I was like, okay, maybe you're just a visual learner. So here, boom, this is what it looks like. And Kevin was talking about rerouting the camera into that. Uh, that was very helpful. All right, everyone. So that is showrunner secrets from the set. Thank you so much. I'm actually really, really excited to see how everyone is going to put together their live streaming checklist for their clients, their interviewees, even for yourself, right, Wendy? Even for yourself. That's going to be good. Cool. Having said that, I want to go ahead and give a shout out to the crew that has helped put this show together. We will see you next time. Thank you so much. Go.